Um, okay, so now I'm, um, I've got the, I think I've got the recording going. Let's make sure that that is the case. Yeah, I do have the recording. And um, let me uh, change the uh, uh, share here. And uh, I'm just going to switch to the notes. And so, all right. Okay. So um, can y'all see those notes now? Anybody? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Okay. All right. So for some reason, I don't trust my, uh, let's admit Van. Hi, Van, are you here? Did I leave you uh, waiting too long? All right, let me see if I can get my windows uh, out of the way. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. All right. Okay, I think I can do it this way. Um, okay, so um, uh, we're starting a new set of notes here uh, 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 today, and um, uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about straight lines. So now you've been studying straight lines since, um, uh, you know, very early in your um, uh, 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 study of algebra. So uh, I think you're, uh, you know a lot about straight lines. So um uh, what I'm going to tell you here is uh, is really going to be a review for you, all right? But lines play a, a really important uh, role in calculus, so we want to make sure that we've got all of the, uh, you know, basic facts about lines down before we um, uh, uh, launch uh, uh, too far into calculus, because, um, again, believe it or not, uh, uh, although lines are very simple relations, uh, they play a really fundamental role in uh, the study of uh, uh, calculus. So uh, I think one of the very first examples we looked at last time was this relation from um, uh, 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 that uh, uh, related there the amount of gas uh, that you purchase at a particular gas station and um, and the cost uh, uh, for the gas. So uh, 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 again, these are the two quantities that this relation is relating uh, amount of gas purchased and the total cost for the gas. I was letting the variable X here in this example represent uh, the amount of gas purchased that's measured in gallons. And I'm letting Y, that variable represent the, uh, the uh, total cost, right? And so uh, the, the relation here was just presented as a table of data. But uh, remember, this is really a mathematical relation because we can convert each one of the, we can convert each one of the rows in this table, right, into an ordered, pair, correct? And, um, and of course, anytime then you end up with a set of ordered pairs, right? Uh, you're going to have a mathematical uh, relation. So uh, this table of uh, 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 data pairs, right, um, of related data values, we can uh, convert that to a set of ordered pairs, and therefore we have a uh, relation. So it is appropriate to talk about this uh, table of data as a uh, relation, right? And uh, we can graph the relation, right? Uh, it, it, we don't have to just express it as a table of data or as a, this set of ordered pairs, but we can also uh, graph that relation, right, by plotting each one of the ordered pairs in the relation. So I've already done that for you here on this uh, set of axes, did it by hand. So it's a little bit of a rough, um, little bit of a rough graph, right? But um, uh, there's the graph. Uh, of this uh, uh, relation there, right, that relates uh, X, right, the amount of gas purchased uh, to Y, uh, the, the cost there for uh, purchasing that amount of gas. No, notice my table of data here is probably a little bit out of date because um, gas prices have been going up recently. But um, anyway, when I made this up, it was uh, sort of semi-authentic, right, um, data. Now, um, so I, I plotted each one of the ordered pairs, right, as a point, each one of the ordered pairs in the relation, I plotted that, right? But now notice that I've uh, 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 extended the relation to not just that set of points, but I've extended that relation to an entire uh, straight line, uh, correct, right? Okay, because you could purchase amounts of uh, uh, gasoline other than uh, just two, four, six, eight, and uh, 10 and 12, right? You can purchase 
uh, uh, different amounts of gasoline, right? So this relation actually includes a lot more uh, ordered pairs than just the uh, the six that I've listed here. So um, if I uh, connect all of these points with a, a straight line, that gives me a fuller picture, right, of this uh, relationship, right, between uh, the amount of gas purchased and uh, uh, and uh, the price. And notice that uh, I, I uh, sort of, uh, I connected these um, uh, dots with a straight line because they all appear uh, on a straight line, right? Okay, so it appears that the, the proper way to uh, complete, uh, to make a complete graph of this relation is to draw a straight line. And in fact, uh, as we're going to discover, that uh, is in fact uh, uh, correct. Um, I do want you to notice that I I, um, I altered the picture here in a couple of ways. Notice that uh, here to the uh, left side of the y-axis, I extended this line as a dotted line because really this uh, part of the graph should not be included, right? Okay. Uh, uh, why should uh, this part of the graph not be uh, really included here. So that's why I indicated it with a dotted line. So why does the graph of this light line really not extend uh, over here to the left? Can someone just tell me that? So why is it not appropriate to, uh, 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 you know, draw this straight line uh, continuing down here to the, uh, uh, to the left? Um, because neither cost or the amount of gas can go into the negatives. Yeah, that's right. You can't uh, purchase a negative amount of um, you can't purchase a negative amount of uh, gas, right? So, um, uh, so it really doesn't make sense, right, to extend this relation, uh, uh, this line over here uh, to the left. Also, I want you to notice that I left an open dot here. You can't see it very well, but there's this is an open dot right here at the origin. Uh, 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 so the line, although it extends all the way up to the origin here, it really doesn't include uh, this point zero zero, right? Uh, 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 the origin, because you can't purchase um, um, zero amount of gas either, right? <laughs> okay, it doesn't make sense to talk about uh, 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 purchasing zero amount of gas, right? If you're purchasing zero gas, then you're not interested in this uh, relation at all, right? Okay, this relation doesn't have any meaning. So, uh, uh, so the line stops here at the origin doesn't extend it here to the left, but actually it doesn't even include, it really, really shouldn't even include the origin. So that's why I left an open dot there uh, at the uh, origin. Those are just some of uh, nuances there of making graphs that uh, you know are gonna uh, sort of uh, come up from time to time uh, here, in the, uh, here in the class. All right, so here's our relation written as a set of ordered pairs, right? And there it is written as a, uh, there it is, uh, represented as a graph, okay, which is another uh, way of uh, representing uh, uh, relations. I also want to take this relation, though, and I want to convert it into a formula, because that's another important way uh, that we often express relations, right, is as uh, equations, right, instead of just as sets of ordered pairs or as graphs. So I don't think we've uh, uh, tried this before in the class, but we get to do this uh, frequently in the class. Um, let's see if we can uh, take this a line that we graphed and let's see if we can write an equation for this line. So I want to convert this relation uh, uh, from, uh, again, from set of ordered pairs. Uh, I already uh, drew it as a graph. Now let's convert it into an equation, which is another way that we often uh, see uh, uh, relations expressed, right? Equations with two variables. Of course, there are my two variables, right? Uh, X is the amount of gas pumped and Y is the uh, total cost. So how can we uh, uh, write down a formula there that would represent the, um, uh, uh, how could we write down a formula there that would represent the, um, uh, 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 the cost there of purchasing uh, a certain amount of uh, a gas, okay? So again, how can we convert this relationship into uh, the appropriate equation? Well, if you think about this in uh, in practical terms, this is real easy to do. Look, it, when you go to the, when you go and buy gas, right? Okay, um, uh, of course the pump tells you how much you're going to pay, right? But you easily know how to verify what is on that what is on the pump is correct, right? So uh, no one's going to be able to cheat you uh, out of uh, the right uh, cost for when you purchase gas, right? Because how can you verify 
that uh, uh, what uh, the price, uh, uh, you know, the total cost uh, on the pump when you're pumping the gas, how do you verify that that's correct? I mean, just very quickly, how can you uh, 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 check that? What do you do? See what I'm asking? So you go put some gas into your car. The the uh, the amount of the pump says you know some figure, and uh, if you just wanted to sort of very quickly sort of uh, 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 make sure that you did the, you know that you're not getting cheated, what would you do? Oh yeah, so Avery says, oh yeah, I multiply the price right by the number of uh, gallons pumped. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, correct. Right, you multiply the price there by the amount of gallons that you uh, uh, pumped. Correct. Okay. Uh, but now when you say price there, Avery, uh, you need to be a little bit more specific. It's price for what? Per gallon. Per gallon, right. Okay. So uh, that's correct, Avery, right? You just take the price per gallon, right? And then you just uh, uh, multiply it by the number of gallons pumped, right? So uh, let's uh, uh, compute here quickly for us, uh, for ourselves, right? What was that price uh, uh, per gallon, right? Can we uh, easily deduce what that price per gallon was? Let's look back at the, let's look back at the table here. So uh, let's see, two gallons was 360, right? Four gallons was 720, correct? Six gallons was 1080, right? So, um, so how much was that, uh, how much does that price per gallon have to be? Based on what we can just see here in the, based $1. on what we can just see here in the table, what? $1.80. Yeah, uh, $1.80, right? Yeah, someone typed 130, but it, uh, you uh, uh, typed wrong there, I think, right? It's 180, right? You can calculate that easy by taking the 360, right, that we, uh, uh, that we paid for two gallons, right? And take 360 and divide that by two, and you get um, 180, okay? All right, so the price per gallon is 180. And then Avery said, oh, okay, so I take the price per gallon, which is 180, and then I just multiply it by the amount of uh, uh, gas pumped. What's my uh, 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 name for the amount of gas pumped? What variable am I using for that? Can you see it here? What's it say? X. X, right. So we just take 180, right, and we multiply by X, and that's what gives me the total cost, correct? So you see the total cost there is uh, just the price per gallon, right, times the amount of gas pump. See, that's so very simple, right? Okay, that's almost a, a, a grade school problem, okay? When I'm asking it, uh, it's so easy that students are often confused by what I'm asking, right? But um, this is it, right, okay? So you see, there's the equation. It's a very simple equation, but there's the equation in two variables, right? That represents that same um, that represents that same relation. So there's our relation written as equation in two variables. There's uh, that relation written as a, a, a drawn a represented as a graph, right? And then here's the relation represented kind of as a set of uh, ordered pairs. But they're really all the same, really all the same um, relation. Okay. All right, now, uh, what I want to point out about this relation, of course, is we're in this section about lines, right? This relation is a straight line, okay? And many of our, uh, uh, and again, uh, 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 straight lines are a very common and important type of relation, okay? And uh, 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 one reason they're so uh, important is because they're very simple relations, right? It's very easy to graph a straight line, so that's a very easy curve to graph, and uh, I noticed that this formula for this straight line was also very easy equation in two variables, right? Very simple equation in two variables. It wasn't complicated at all, right? And so that's one of the things that makes lines uh, uh, very attractive to us is they're very simple types of relations, right? Okay, they're easy to work with. They're easy to understand. Uh, they're easy to deal with. And so for that reason, uh, when, uh, whenever possible, uh, we like to use... Um, uh, linear relations, okay? Well, we can't use them in every instance, but um, but when we can use them, uh, 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 they're really nice because they're so easy. All right, so what I'm going to give you now uh, here in the notes are some fundamental properties of 
uh, uh, lines. Okay, so um, so what I'm just listing here are some of the really important facts about straight lines. They're going to be useful to us in this class. Okay, and again, uh, 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 calculus is going to rely a lot on straight lines. Um, that's really one of the nice things about calculus that kind of makes the subject more approachable to us is uh, it's built around a lot around straight lines, right? And straight lines are easy to uh, understand. Okay. All right. So let me just go through these properties and you're going to be familiar with these properties. You may not have seen them all summarized in one place like this. Maybe you have, but, uh, uh, but these are just really the key facts that we need to keep in mind about uh, straight lines. Okay. So uh, remember lines are relations. Uh, relations can be written as equations in two variables, right? Okay. So here's what linear relations look like when they're written as equations. Okay. So if you have a linear relation written as equation, usually it's going to appear in one of these three forms. Okay. These three forms are all uh, equivalent to each other. All right. They're just uh, uh, written in slightly different ways but they're really all equivalent, okay? So sometimes you will see linear relations written in this uh, uh, format, where notice the equation is set to zero, right? Uh, the equation is solved for zero. Uh, this is called general uh, form for the linear relation. Uh, now, I wanna point out that you've got lots of variables in this equation, right? So it, when you first look at it, you might uh, get a little bit snow blind there, but X and Y are the, are the important variables, okay, all right? Um, uh, those are the variables that, uh, are, that are part of the relation. The A, B, and C here are gonna be sp uh, specific constants that are gonna change from uh, linear equation to linear equation, all right? So when you're actually working with a particular linear equation, you will know the values for A, B, and C. The X and Y will remain as uh, the two uh, uh, variables that you have to solve for or you have to uh, 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 replace in the equation, okay? But the A, B, and C will be uh, given to you. They'll be known to you, all right? All right, so that's called general form, just uh, 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 solved, uh, uh, the equation solved for zero. Um, I want you to notice that in the, in the linear equation, notice that X and Y are raised to the first power. So almost any time you have an equation with two variables in it, and the, uh, the X and Y are, uh, usually X and Y will be the variables. Uh, if X and Y are both raised to the first power, that's almost certainly going to be a linear equation, okay? So uh, really easy to uh, recognize linear equations. The X and Y are raised to uh, the first power, okay? Um, all right. Now, sometimes, however, we will, uh, uh, we will take a, a linear equation and we will solve it for the variable y, okay? So when you do that and simplify, you get an equation that looks like this, okay? Again, the m and the b are gonna be known constants to you, all right? So uh, when you take a linear equation, you solve it for y, you get an equation that looks like this, y equals mx uh, plus b, okay? I know you've heard that equation before, y equal mx plus b. Um, this is uh, called the slope-intercept form for a linear equation. Okay, slope intercept form. Now, where the terms uh, slope and intercept come from, this coefficient m that is in front of the x, that coefficient is called the uh, slope of the line. All right. So um, when you write an equation in slope intercept form, okay, the coefficient on the x that is called uh, uh, the slope of the line. And this uh, uh, second constant, notice the constant that's added at the end there, this happens to be the y-intercept for the line. So when you graph the line, that's where the line is going to cross um, the y-axis. Now, slope is going to be a really important concept for us, okay? So um, we're going to be talking about slope a lot here in the class. That's a really important idea in calculus, okay? I know you've talked about slopes of lines in, in many other uh, in your uh, uh, pre-calculus courses as well, all right? And the reason for that is because slope turns out to be a really important fundamental concept uh, in calculus. Oh, oh, by the way, now, why is this second constant, why is this the um, y-intercept for the equation? Remember, uh, we just did the poll on this. How do you find y-intercepts of, uh, 
of a, a relation analytically? Set x equal to zero. What did we say? Set x, x equals equal zero. zero. Yeah, you set x to zero, right? Okay. So, uh, 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 so it notice in this equation when you set x to zero, you get y equals m times zero plus b. Well, m times zero is zero, of course. So you just get y is equal to b, right? So um, that's why the uh, the b value here is the y intercept, right? But now keep in mind. That is when the line is written in slope intercept form. That means the equation is solved for y, and this side, the right hand side of the equation, is simplified. Now, there's another version of uh, uh, linear uh, uh, equations um, uh, where the equation is solved for y, but the right hand side is not completely simplified. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, uh, uh, when I use the term, so I probably haven't said this before. When I use the term simplify, that means that uh, you have carried out all the arithmetic that you can by hand. Okay. You've carried out all the arithmetic that you can by hand. All right. So uh, notice in this uh, linear equation, the right hand side is not simplified. The reason it's not simplified is because I could take the M and multiply it by the x, I can take the m and multiply it by the x of one, and, and then I could add uh, 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 m times x of one plus y one together, okay? Uh, I could carry out that arithmetic by hand. So, uh, but I haven't done that in this equation. So this, in this version of the linear equation, the right-hand side is not simplified. Um, this version of a linear equation, however, is called point slope Form. And this is another convenient way sometimes of writing down uh, linear uh, equations for linear relations, all right? Now, uh, of course, the M is still the slope, right? So uh, M still means slope, just like it did uh, in the slope-intercept form. Now, you may be wondering, well, what does he mean by X sub 1 and Y sub 1, all right? Well, again, these are constants. These are not the variables X and Y. These are constants. But uh, what X sub 1 and y sub one represent are, uh, uh, these are coordinates for some point on the line. It actually can be any point on the line, okay? So x sub one and y sub one, those are coordinates for any point on the line. Um, this uh, point slope form is gonna give us a really easy way of writing down uh, uh, linear relations, uh, 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 our equations for linear relations if we're given a graph. So if we're given a graph for the uh, uh, linear uh, uh, relation and we want to convert it to an equation, this point slope form is really useful for uh, doing that. Okay, so that's why I mentioned uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, version for uh, 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 the equation for a linear relation. All right, so again, we're going to use all of these in the class. General form, maybe general form a little bit less often. Uh, slope intercept form and point slope form, all right? There are other, by the way, forms for writing down equations for lines, but these are the ones that are gonna be, um, um, uh, the ones that we're gonna use most frequently, okay? All right, so, um, so kind of the moral of the story here very quickly is this is what um, uh, 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 equations or linear relations look like usually, all right? Remember, the x and the y are both raised to the first power. So if you have an equation with two variables and either the x or the y is not raised to the first power, that's probably not a linear relation, okay? It may be a perfectly good relation, but not a uh, linear relation. All right, I want to stop there and uh, 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 just for a second. Do y'all have questions? Any questions about that so far? So that should be pretty familiar to you, right? Okay, you've uh, uh, dealt with straight lines. Is that, does this all seem like just a review to you? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. Can I get a second there? No? Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so um, I think that's, um, is it Donna? Donna, is that you talking? Yeah, hi, I'm Donna. Okay, all right, thanks, Donna. Um, all right, so I keep wanting to call you Dana because you have an unusual spelling for your name, but it's actually Donna. 
Yeah, I know it's spelled weirdly because it's mm-hmm. actually in Arabic, but yeah, it is pronounced donut. Oh, okay. Uh, it's oh, so it's Arabic. I thought you were just gonna say, you know, my parents were uh, young and silly or something and spelled it like that. But um, yeah, no, okay, <laughs> all right, um, all right. Now, uh, uh, two and three here are just kind of uh, 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 facts about straight lines uh, that are also going to be important to us. Uh, uh, they're kind of random facts about straight lines, but I threw them into this list because they're going to be useful to us. Um, if you have two lines that are non-vertical, so vertical lines are straight up and down, right? But if you have two lines that are non-vertical, uh, they're going to have the same slope, the same slope value, that M value, right? They're going to have the same slope if and only if they are parallel to one another. So you know what, what parallel lines look like, right? Parallel lines are, they don't cross, right? Parallel lines are lines that don't intersect uh, each other. So there's kind of a, an example of two very uh, 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 wiggly uh, straight lines there, all right? Uh, uh, so uh, parallel lines have the same slope, okay? Um, so that's just kind of a little factoid there that uh, is going to be useful uh, to us, okay, uh, in the class, all right? And if you have non-vertical and non-horizontal lines, you know, horizontal lines are flat lines, right? So if you have uh, uh, two lines that are non-vertical and non-horizontal, right, uh, they're going to be perpendicular to each other if and only if their slopes are negative reciprocals. So the important thing to keep in mind here is that there is a relationship between the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. So perpendicular means uh, two lines that uh, they cross each other. So they're not parallel. They cross each other, but they cross each other at a 90 degree angle, right? That's what perpendicular means. So here's kind of an example of uh, two perpendicular lines. They would cross each other at a 90 degree angle. And uh, if that's the case, what that means, if that happens to be the case, then their slopes are negative reciprocals. So if the slope of this line, for instance, is M, the slope of this line is M, then the slope of this perpendicular line would be the negative reciprocal of M. What do I mean by negative reciprocal? Well, reciprocal means you invert it, right? So you would have one over M instead of M. One over M is the reciprocal and you have to change the sign. So you would have to make this negative, okay? So again, that seems like a very specialized fact about uh, 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 straight lines, and it kind of is, but it's one that is gonna be useful uh, to us here from time to time. So we kind of wanna keep that in mind, all right? So two and three here, just a couple of facts about parallel and perpendicular lines. Now, the fourth fact, however, is a uh, 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 fourth important uh, uh, fact here about straight lines. This one is really super crucial to us, all right? So this is one that we really have to constantly keep in mind, all right? Um, when you have a straight line, when you have a linear relation, okay, uh, this, is a, 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 this is a fact and very useful fact to us, all right? In a linear relation, when X increases by a steady amount, right, when you increase X by a steady amount, then the Y value is also going to change by a steady amount. Now, keep in mind that these two steady amounts do not have to be the same, all right, okay? When X increases by a steady amount, Y is going to change also by a steady amount, but the amount of change in Y does not have to be the same as the amount that X increases. See that, okay? But when X increases by a steady amount, the Y value is also going to change by a steady amount. You can sort of already get the feel for uh, uh, why this fact is important to us in calculus, differential calculus, because remember I said in differential calculus, we're, a, we're focusing on studying how in relations, how one quantity changes when the other quantity changes, correct, okay? So that is kind of uh, what differential calculus is focusing on, right? Uh, in a relation, when X changes, how does the Y value change correspondingly, okay? And uh, 
But uh, this uh, and and this fact about straight lines gives us some information about the change in linear in linear relations. Okay, so in a linear relation, when x increases by um, a, a steady amount, notice it's increases by the way. When x increases by a steady amount, then Uh, my pen has died on here. When X increases by a steady amount, the Y value is also going to change by um, a, a steady amount. Uh, by the way, notice that uh, I put here X is increasing, but I didn't say Y was increasing. Y could be decreasing by a steady amount, okay? All right, it just says changes. So Y could be increasing or a uh, 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 or Y could be decreasing. So uh, uh, keep that in mind. Now, um, here's the second part of this statement, okay? Um, uh, the change in Y, right, which could be positive or could be negative, the change in Y, when X increases by exactly one unit, that change in Y, that happens to be the slope, all right? So let me repeat that because that's going to be a really crucial uh, 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 definition for us. The change in Y, right, could be positive or negative. When X increases by exactly one unit, that change in Y, that happens to be the same as the slope M of the line, all right? So I've said that once or twice, okay? We're going to say it lots of times throughout the course, all right? This is what I call the basic interpretation of slope, all right? Basic interpretation of slope is the change in Y when X increases by one unit, okay? When X increases by one unit. All right, so we're gonna uh, be coming back to that several times because in the class, it's gonna be really important for us to under, uh, understand that interpretation of the slope of, uh, that interpretation of the slope of a uh, line. Okay. Um, all right, so I've dazzled y'all here now with just a lot of uh, definitions, okay? They're, they're very basic definitions, and I know they're things that you're already familiar with. Uh, uh, so let's stop there for a few minutes, okay? And, um, and uh, take a little break here, and uh, then we'll come back, and uh, we're actually going to try to apply some of these, um, uh, uh, some of these four basic uh, features of uh, linear relations that... Uh, I just uh, mentioned and 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 flesh them out a little bit more in depth with some specific examples. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop here for we'll stop the recording here for a few minutes and um, so let me pause this recording if I can get back to that and um, and so we'll come back at around a little bit after twelve thirty. Okay, is everyone okay? Okay, I'm back. So. Um, I'm going to resume the. Um, I'm going to resume the recording. All right, so I've started that again. Um, so let's take a look at a really. This is just really a, a pre-calculus question, but I just want to remind you about uh, uh, straight lines here in just one example, uh, quickly. So uh, in this uh, problem two, it says um, to start with. This is a multi-part uh, question here. It says. Find the slope of the line uh, graphed here. All right, so there we have a linear uh, relation that's graphed right. Okay, that's pretty clearly right—a straight line. So, um, uh, so uh, the question there just says, find what is its uh, slope. And um, uh, now I'm going to—I know you know some formulas for slope, and I'm I'm going to remind you of those in just a second here. But we really don't need to know. Uh, uh, any special formulas for slope in order to uh, calculate the slope of this particular line. All we need to really keep in mind in this case is um, uh, uh, the basic interpretation of the slope, right? And remember, the basic interpretation of the slope was it's oh the amount that y changes, right, when x increases, when x increases by one unit. All right, so right, um, if you take a look at this line, right, uh, you've got some points that are uh, uh, whose coordinates on the line are given to you. 
and and you can use uh, that information uh, to really uh, quickly deduce uh, what the slope of the line is. Uh, okay. Let's start with this point here, uh, zero and um, uh, 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 minus five, right? Okay. I'm going to mute everyone. Um, okay. So you can unmute yourself if you need to. Um, if you need to add, ask me a question. All right. So this point uh, zero minus five, right, is on the is on the graph of this line. By the way, that happens to be the the y intercept uh, as well, right? Because this is where the line crosses the. Uh, this is where the line crosses the y-axis. Uh, the x-intercept is somewhere up here. We're not quite sure what that is, right? Okay. Uh, uh, looks like it's a little bit more than one and a half, but um, uh, not quite sure there. Uh, but anyway, let's imagine ourselves starting at this point uh, that's on the left here. And notice if you start from that point, let me see if I can get myself positioned here properly. So if you start at this point, right, and you imagine yourself uh, 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 moving uh, uh, along the x-axis to the right, that is increasing x by one, right? Then notice that uh, 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 the y value here is going to increase by, well, let's see by how much, correct, right? So if we increase x by one unit, right, um, uh, starting at this point, then the y value is going to increase by, Let's see, what would that be? Well, uh, at this uh, point, we're at negative five on the y-axis. At this point, we're at minus two on the y-axis, right? So that means we've gone up, right, in a positive direction, gone up by three, right? So notice here for this line, when x increases by one, y is changing. In this case, it's also increasing. Y is changing by three. And so um, uh, the, the very, just the very basic uh, interpretation of the slope, right, tells us that that means that we know here the slope is going to be equal to three, right, okay? Because for straight lines, the slope is the change in y when x increases by one unit. Um, that is steady for lines, right, okay? That slope is going to be steady for lines. So on a line, it doesn't matter uh, what point you start at, okay? Um, if you increase x by uh, one unit, the y is going to change by whatever the slope value is, okay? So for lines, the, uh, the change in y uh, is steady when x, change it, when x increases by a steady amount, right? So notice that it, when we start from the second point that's on the line and we increase x by one, right? Notice, again, we have to go up by the same amount. Uh, the y has to change by three. Okay, um, that's that uh, 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 other important uh, fact about a um, uh, uh, slope, right? When x increases by a steady amount, y is also going to change by a steady amount. So if you increase x by one here, the, the y is still going to go up by three, right? And see, indeed, that's exactly uh, what happens. So just from our basic interpretation of the slope, we can deduce uh, that the slope here uh, must be uh, three, right? Now, uh, when you're actually computing the slope for lines, it's not often uh, convenient to, you know, be able to draw these uh, uh, nice pictures like I have here. So uh, as you know from your other uh, uh, pre-calculus classes, right, uh, there are um, many uh, formulas that we can use to actually compute a slope. Um, uh, most of them uh, boil down to the same idea Okay, well, not most of them, they all boil down to the same idea, although they're expressed in slightly different forms. And the idea is you can compute the slope of a line by calculating from one point on the line to another point on the line, uh, the change in Y, and then divide that by the change in X from that first point to that second point, right? Compute what the change in Y is and divide that by what the change in X is from the first point to the second point. And that will uh, uh, allow you to compute the slope of the line, all right? So, um, uh, 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 so there's one way of expressing uh, a formula for a calculating slope. It's change in y divided by change in x. This is often expressed in lots of different ways, though, okay? Um, uh, sometimes it's sort of writing out change in y in words. Uh, we can express that idea by ma mathematically 
uh, in the following way. If you put this uh, little triangle, that's the Greek letter delta, and um, uh, 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 that's the Greek letter capital delta, actually. And so um, that's often a symbol that we use in mathematics to represent change, okay, uh, uh, in a quantity. So um, uh, we can express a, a change in y divided by change in x. Instead of it expressing that um, uh, verbally, we can express it in notation by delta y over delta x. So you often will see the slope expressed in this way, okay? Um, uh, uh, another way that you probably learned for uh, uh, expressing change in y over change in x is uh, using this phrase, rise over run, because that's an easy phrase to remember, right? Okay. And so we can use the uh, uh, the word rise for change in Y and run for uh, a change in X. And um, students often like to remember that formula uh, as an easy way for uh, remembering how to compute uh, slope. Um, a little bit more uh, formal way of uh, writing down this formula for slope is as follows. All right, um, you can write down this formula, Y sub two uh, 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 minus Y sub one over X sub two minus x sub one. And uh, in this formula, uh, uh, x sub one and y sub one, those are coordinates for a point on the line and x sub two and y sub two, uh, those are coordinates for a second point on the line. So if you uh, know two points on the line, no matter how uh, close or how far apart those two points are, by the way, um, you can also calculate the slope by taking the difference in the y coordinates between those two points and dividing it by difference in the x coordinates uh, between those two points. So you probably use this formula for computing the slope uh, uh, quite a lot, right? Um, let's apply that formula uh, again in this, uh, in this picture, all right, for uh, this particular uh, straight line, okay? Um, let's uh, pick a couple of points that we know off of uh, uh, this line, right? So of course, one point we know off of the line is zero and minus five. So I can call that uh, X sub one and Y sub one. X sub one can be zero and Y sub one can be minus five. And then let's let this other point up here at the uh, top right, uh, let's let that be X sub two, Y sub two, right? The, my second point on the line. I could have used this point as well, but uh, I just chose this one. Any two points will do. And then uh, according to my slope formula, right? Let's see, um, we take the difference in the Y coordinates. So I would take one minus a uh, minus five, one minus a uh, minus five, right? And then divide that by the difference in the X coordinates. So that would be two minus zero. And uh, you get one minus a minus five. Well, that's one plus five, which is uh, six. And um, so you get here six, uh, if I can get this to write, you get six divided by two minus zero, of course, is two. So you end up with, of course, no surprise there, three, right? Okay, so that formula also gives us three as the slope of, um, this particular line, okay? So uh, there are many uh, versions there, uh, many ways of sort of uh, uh, stating uh, the formula for uh, computing the slope of the line. This is the one that you're gonna use actually though, uh, most frequently, right? Um, uh, if you have two points on the line, take the difference in the Y coordinates, take the difference in the X coordinates, uh, 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 take the quotient there, and that will give you the uh, that will give you the slope of the that will give you the slope of the line. Okay. Now, once you've got the slope of the line, then uh, you can take your line and you can write down the formula for that line, right? Okay, or the equation for that line. So um, let's do that next, right? Okay. So see, notice we started with the graph of this line, right? And now I want to write down its. Um, now I wanna write down its equation. So we started with a relation given to us in graphical form, right? And now we want to uh, uh, convert that graphical form uh, to a formula. All right, so let's think about now, uh, 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 so what we need to remind ourselves of is, hmm, which formula for a line 
uh, uh, which formula for a line there do I want to use to write down uh, the formula for this particular line? So notice we got lots of choices, right? Um, we've got lots of choices here, right? We can use the general form or we can use the slope intercept form or we can use the uh, 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 or we can use the point slope form for writing down the formula for that line. Let's see, let's think about what information we know about this particular line, right? Um, let's see, uh, do we know the slope and do we know the, remember this is the y-intercept. So do we know the slope and the y-intercept for uh, this line um, that I had pictured there below? Did we know those two pieces of information? Did we know the slope? We calculated that, right? So what was the slope? Three. Oh, what now? Uh, three. Yeah. So the slope was three. We knew that, right? Okay. So you see that piece of information we know. And do we know the y-intercept? Did we know the y-intercept? Let's see. Let's look at our picture. And um, let's remember if we knew the y-intercept there from the, from the picture that we were given. So uh, do we know the y-intercept? Can we see it there? We know the slope is three, right? So do we know the y-intercept? Someone help me there. What now? Negative five. Yeah, it's negative five. Sure, right. You can see it, right? So we know the y-intercept. So you see, it's really easy, right, to write down the equation for this line since the y-intercept is minus five, right? Let me, let me just stick it right in here. So according to that slope intercept formula, we can write down y equals to the slope, which is three times x, and then plus the y intercept, which is minus five. So I can write uh, uh, plus minus five there, right? Which I don't need to write both plus and minus. I can just put uh, uh, the minus five there. So, ah, see how easy that was? There's the equation, or there's the equation for this line, right? Uh, that we had originally just, we had the graph of it. Uh, there's the equation for it. Now, uh, we can also use, by the way, uh, the point slope form, all right? We can also use point slope form. Remember, here's the po point slope form. Y is equal to M times X minus X1 um, plus um, Y1, all right? And remember the X1, Y1, those are coordinates for points on at some point on the line. It can be any point on the line, and um, and uh, m is the slope. Well, we already know the slope, right? Okay, we already calculated the slope. Do we know a point on the line? Sure, right. Okay, we know lots of points uh, on this line. Correct, right? Okay. Uh, uh, well, we know three of them for sure, and you can use any one of those three that you like. Let me use this one, uh, uh, since we uh, uh, just for fun there. So here's another way of writing down the formula for this line. We would have three times X minus the X coordinate of this point. The X coordinate at this point is one. And then add on the Y intercept, okay? What was, I'm sorry, not the Y intercept, but the Y coordinate of this point. Well, the Y coordinate of this point is um, minus two. Ah, so um, there's a, a second way of writing down the formula for our line. These two formulas are really equivalent to each other. They just look slightly different, okay? But when you simplify this one, you know, take the three times the minus one and then subtract the two, you're gonna get y equals three uh, x minus five. So it really is the same equation for uh, uh, that line. Uh, so you see, that's really cool. We took the, see, we took the graph and we converted it to a equation, all right? Uh, something that we uh, uh, like to do. And of course, we like to go the other direction as well, right? We like to take equations and make graphs out of them uh, as well, okay? Now, um, I want to ask you another question here. Um, what is the x-intercept for this line? So we really can't see that very well, right? Uh, on the picture, uh, I mean, we can, it looks like it's a little bit more than one and a half. 
but we're not quite certain of that, right? We can estimate it from the graph. But, uh, how can we find the x-intercept analytically? Remember, Professor, what does analytically mean? Wait, what, what's your question there? Uh, this point slope form that you wrote, uh, which point are you using? Like the x1 and the y1? I was using this one. Uh, but I can use any point. Okay, I, I see. Yeah. So, um, yeah, remember, I called this x1, y1 when I was computing the slope. But now I'm calling it, it's, I'm now calling this one x1, y1 when I'm using the point slope form. Okay. Um, so I sort of changed up the x1, y1 in the middle of the problem, which, which is fine. All right. So what about the, um, uh, what about now the, uh, uh, the x intercept? You see, okay. So I know the y intercept is minus five. Um, how can I determine exactly, uh, precisely what that um, x intercept is? So what's the process for finding x-intercepts analytically? I can't really see graphically, right, but uh, perfectly. But how can I find the x-intercept analytically? That was one of our poll questions. So how do I do that? You can use either equation we just made, or I don't know what the word is, but either of those equations will work. And you can just put y equal to 0. Instead. Yeah, just put y equal to 0, right? Remember, that was the process. Put y, let's use this one. This one is a little bit easy, right? So uh, just put y equal to zero and then solve for x, right? And so, uh, oh, that's easy. We get three x is equal to five or x is equal to uh, five. Okay, so there's the x-intercept uh, if we need that for some reason. All right, now I'm going to skip down. We're going to come back to um, uh, we're going to come back to uh, this example uh, next time. This is a nice example, but we're going to come back to that next time. Uh, I want to get to problem number four because I want to get a little a, a bit more calculus here into the into our uh, uh, brains now. Uh, not just uh, not just straight lines. Okay. All right. So uh, 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 what this problem says is um, find the equation of the line, the equation of the line, right? That is tangent to the circle graphed here. I'm not showing you the circle, but I'll scroll down in a second. Um, uh, find the equation for the line that is tangent to the circle that's graphed here at this particular point. So let me scroll down and show you the picture. So um, there's a circle, not a terrible drawing of a circle by me there, okay? But imagine that's a, a nice, uh, perfect circle there. By the way, this circle is a relation itself, right? This circle is a relation itself, okay? And there is the equation for, there's the uh, uh, equation with two variables for that particular relation, right? Uh, notice that this is not a linear equation, right? Okay. Of course, when you graph it, you get this circle, it turns out, uh, and uh, that's not a straight line, right? So this is definitely not a linear uh, equation, right? But how can you immediately tell from looking at the equation that it's not a linear equation? What's the tip-off that says, ooh, if I try to make a graph of this equation, I'm not going to get a straight line. Uh, what's the tip-off there? What now? The squared variables. Yeah, the squared variables, right? Remember, in a linear equation, remember the x and the y are just going to be raised to the first power. Well, it turns out that when you graph this equation, you'll get a you'll get this nice circle centered at the origin. Its uh, uh, radius is two. Okay, so um, this is not really all that important to us in this problem, but this happens to be whoops. This happens to be two here. This is minus two uh, uh, over here is minus two up here. Two. So uh, the radius there is uh, the radius there is two. Now, however, what we want to find is the equation not for this circle because there it is x squared plus y squared equal four. We want to find the equation for this green line here, right? The equation for this green line uh, that touches that just touches this point on the circle. Okay, and uh, uh, that's the point, by the way, the, uh, uh, the coordinates for that point are one and square root of three. 
um, one and square root of three. That point happens to be on uh, this uh, circle. I'm just telling you that, okay? Uh, that point happens to be on that circle. Now, uh, uh, so that brings up the, uh, the definition of what is a tangent line, okay? So I, 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 I'm claiming that this green line is a tangent line. What makes a line a tangent line, okay? So that's what I want to explain to you now, okay? Uh, but I'm going to use a slightly different example. Okay, so uh, a slightly different drawing to explain this. All right, so here we have a nice curve. So this is the graph of some relation, right? Okay, so not a circle, but here we have a nice a curve, all right? And um, let's focus on this point right here. Let's focus on this point right here. It looks like, well, I don't know what the coordinates for that point are, okay? I can't really tell, all right, from, from the graph what the coordinates uh, for this point is, but let's think about that particular point on the curve, all right? Now, let's do a little bit of a, let's do a little thought experiment here, okay? And then we'll actually try it uh, uh, physically, but um, let's do a little thought experiment here. Uh, suppose that you, we were to zoom in, right? Suppose that we were to zoom in on just this tiny little piece of the graph that's around this point, right? Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in really, really close to um, uh, this uh, piece of the graph that's right around this point. So imagine magnifying that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, many uh, uh, times, right? So you zoom in on just that little piece of the curve. Now, when you start zooming in on that piece of the curve, um, what's that curve gonna start looking like just the piece of the curve that's right around this point. What's that curve gonna start to look like as you zoom in really close on that little piece of the curve? Can your, does your intuition sort of suggest to you, what's that curve gonna start looking like as you get really close, really uh, uh, start magnifying this point? Any um, ideas there? So imagine I take kind of a microscope and I sort of aim it right at this point on the curve. And I really magnify that, you know, dozens of times or hundreds of times. What does that curve start looking like to me? What? Any ideas there? Straight line. It starts looking like a straight line. That's right. Okay. When you get really close, to, is that what y'all were saying? In the chat here, I wasn't paying attention. Um, if you get, when you get really close to this curve, okay, when you get really, really close to the curve around this point, that curve is going to start looking like a straight line, okay? Now, the great thing about calculus is that um, uh, we don't have to uh, limit our imagination. We can think of uh, 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 sort of zooming in on that curve or blowing up that curve, not 10 times or 100 times or 1,000 times, we can think of zooming in on that curve uh, uh, to make it sort of uh, 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 to uh, uh, magnify it sort of infinitely uh, 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 much, all right? And indeed, as we sort of get infinitely close to that point on that curve and just look at that uh, uh, little piece of the curve, Indeed, what we're going to start to see there is a straight line, okay? And that straight line that, that kind of duplicates that curve right around this point, that straight line is called the tangent line, okay? So uh, uh, the, uh, the line uh, uh, that duplicates a curve at right at a particular point, that line is called the tangent line to the curve at that point point. Now, uh, let's actually zoom in on, so I've sort of kind of drawn this tangent line by hand, all right, because I think that this curve close to this point kind of looks like this line. Let's actually try blowing up the curve here a little bit um, and uh, see what happens. So uh, right at this point, so let's go up to 200%. Let me see if I can find the, let me see if I can find the, uh, curve here again. Uh, well, there it is, right? Okay. So see, when you zoomed in right there, again, see, I think that curve is starting to look like 
uh, starting to uh, duplicate this green line or vice versa. That green line is starting to duplicate the shape of this curve, right? Okay, let's go up a little bit more. Um, what do y'all want to try there for fun? You want to try 500 maybe? Where this will stop me at. Wow, okay. I don't know if I can even find the... Uh, I don't know if, he, if I can even find my graph here. Let's see where we're at on this. Uh, see where we're at on this page. Now that's too far down, right? So let me scroll back up. Wow, I think I found it. Ah, okay. <laughs> so there's that same point now, right? Uh, uh, there is uh, uh, enlarged 500%, right? Okay. Well, see, in calculus, the great thing about calculus is we, we can let our mind sort of roam free here. So we can think about uh, 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 blowing this up, uh, 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 magnifying this infinitely many times, all right? And again, what I claim is, and you can uh, you can imagine this is true, right? When you uh, uh, when you uh, 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 you know uh, 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 blow this piece of the curve up right or magnify this piece of the curve sort of infinitely many times, indeed that curve is going to start looking just like a straight line, right? You're not going to see the curvature in it, and the straight line that duplicates that curve right at that point that's called the tangent line to the curve at that point. Now the reason that we're uh, uh, just to give you a preview here, the reason that we're curious about tangent lines, okay, is because tangent lines are lines, all right, okay? So lines are very easy relations to, to work with, right? But most curves are like this one are not straight lines, okay? So they're going to be much harder to work with than straight lines. So in calculus, what we like to do is we like to take more complicated curves like this one, and we want to treat them like straight lines because straight lines are very easy to work with. Well, the way we accomplish that process is we zoom in on just a little piece of the curve. And if we zoom in close enough to just a little piece of the curve at a particular point, what that curve starts to look like is a straight line and it behaves like a straight line, okay? So all the nice features of straight lines, okay, will also apply to the curve, okay? But just apply to the curve at the particular point that we zoom in on, right, okay? All right, so, uh, and the straight line that the curve is going to behave like at a particular point is this so-called tangent line. Okay, so um, I think I drew that pretty good. I think the curve right at this particular point looks like, I think it would look like this, uh, uh, this green line, okay? So I think I uh, do a, drew, do a, did a good job of drawing the tangent line to the, to the curve at this particular uh, point. Uh, notice um, uh, the reason, so, sort of reason that you can tell this is the tangent line is, uh, and this is usually true, Notice the tangent line uh, just kind of touches the curve at this point, right? The tangent line cut touches the curve at this point, but notice it doesn't cut through the curve, right? It doesn't slice through the curve. It just nicks the curve at this point, but it doesn't actually slice through the curve. Now, uh, uh, the thing to keep in mind, though, is that for curves, they're going to have different tangent lines at different points. So notice that this point right, uh, has a different tangent line because around this point, when you uh, uh, zoom in on the curve, the curve, because this is a, uh, a valley point on that curve, right, uh, that curve is going to start looking like a horizontal line because this is a, 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 a well, again, right, this is a valley point, a, turning, a, a valley turning point on this curve, right? So the tangent line at this point is not the same tangent line, right? There's a different tangent line here. Um, 
I think here it's going to be a horizontal line. So um, you sort of get an idea of what a tangent line is, okay? I'll give you just a really short definition. So the tangent line to a curve, right, is the line that duplicates the curve, duplicates the curve at a particular point. But it's got to be at a particular point because different points on the curve will have different tangent lines, all right? So tangent lines look different at different places on a curve, all right? Well, now, let's think about this one. Here we have a curve, right? Okay. In this case, our curve is a circle. And I claim that at that particular point on the circle, I claim at that particular point on the circle, here's what the tangent line would look like. Okay. So I think if we zoom in uh, at this particular point on the circle, I think the tangent line would sort of look like, sort of have this shape. Okay. All right. So the, the question here in this problem is um, not is this the correct tangent line, because I'm going to assume this green line, I, I think I drew this pretty accurately, but what I want to write down is what's the equation for this tangent line? So what's the equation for this tangent line at this point on this circle? Uh, the point is one square root of three, which happens to fall on the circle that has this equation, x squared plus y squared equal four, All right? So I want to write down the equation for this tangent line, okay? This is a problem you're going to do lots and lots in calculus, writing down equations for tangent lines. We're going to do it here today, but we don't need any calculus. We can just use our geometric intuition here uh, to figure out the answer uh, to this question. All right, so uh, let, let's start from the beginning. I want to write down an equation for a line, a formula for this line that I've got a picture of drawn here, right? Okay, but, uh, uh, but I'm not happy with the picture. I want to actually write down the formula for the line. So what pieces of information do we need to write down the formula for the line? We just practiced that in the previous example. What information do I need to write down the formula for this line? Okay, all right. So um, remember, we can write this down in slope-intercept form. So we can use this form. But what do you need for uh, slope-intercept form? What do you need to know? X and Y. No, no. I, X and Y are going to be variables, right? So I need to fill in the M and the B. I need to fill in the M and the B. So what's the M? The slope. I need to know the slope. the slope. Yeah, so I need to figure out the slope for this line. And in this case, I would need to fi find the Y-intercept. I would need to know the Y-intercept. Well, you know, I don't really have much idea what the Y-intercept for this line is, right? Okay, uh, <laughs> I can sort of guess at it. If I extend my, uh, you know, if I extend my y-axis up here, um, you know, this line is going to cross the y-axis somewhere up there, right? So, um, you know, it's going to be more than two, but I really don't have a good idea of what that y-intercept is going to be. So, um, I think I'm kind of, I think I'm in a little, a little bit trouble if I try to use slope-intercept form. What's my second option, though? Remember the other a way of writing down point slope. Slope. what now? Slope. Yeah, point slope, slope what? Point slope form. Point slope, right. So let's remind myself of the point slope. So point slope was M times X minus X1 plus Y1. And remember, the X1 and Y1 is just a point on the line. Ooh, now I'm now I'm in uh, now I'm in business here though because do I know a point that's on my tangent line? Yeah, you do. There it is, right? Okay. See the tangent line. I, I want the tangent line at this point, right? So that means the tangent line has to contain this point because um, you know the tangent line duplicates the circle at this point. Well, if the tangent line is going to duplicate the circle at this point, it better contain that point, right? Okay. So, um, oh, so see, I, so I, 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 now I have some information to start with. I know that uh, the point one square root of three has to be on my line. So I have a value for X1 and Y1. 
So now I'm making progress here, right? I can plug this in, in fact. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So I have m times x minus 1 plus square root of 3. So see, I'm making progress on writing down the formula for that tangent line. What I need to know, however, still is what is the slope? Darn it, okay? So I need to know what is the slope. Hmm. Now, um, normally to find slope, remember, think about your slope formula, right, that we just reviewed there earlier. Normally to find the slope, you would need to know two points on the line. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know two points on the line. I only know this point. But here's where I have a little bit of an advantage. The fact that this curve is a circle. All right. So here's the uh, uh, here's the useful geometric thing that helps me finish this problem. Look, if you draw uh, uh, from this point back to the center of the circle, that's called the radius of the circle, by the way. So if you draw this dotted line like I've got draw, drawn here, right, from this point, one square root of three back to the center of the circle. OK, uh, you can see geometrically, guess what? This radius line and the tangent line, it looks like they're what? What relationship do they have to one another? Perpendicular. They're perpendicular, and that is true, okay? So this uh, a, a radius line and this uh, a tangent line, just because this happens to be a circle, I get a little bit of geometric luck here. These two lines are going to be perpendicular, and I know something about perpendicular lines, right? Their slopes are negative reciprocals. So if I can calculate the slope of this line, the radius line, then I will know what the slope of the tangent line is too, because it's going to be the negative reciprocal. Wow, what's the slope of this line going to be? Um, the, um, the radius line. Well, I can calculate that because I have two points that are on the radius line. One square root of three that point, and also this point, which is the origin. That's coordinate zero, zero. So the slope for this line is going to be, take the difference in the y coordinates, that's square root of three minus zero. Remember, the coordinates for the origin are zero, zero, right? So take square root of three minus zero and divide that by difference in the x coordinates, one minus zero. So you have one minus zero there. Wow, that's nice. What does that turn out to be? To square root of three, right? So the slope of the, uh, the radius line is square root of three. So what is the slope of my tangent line going to be then? Remember, these are perpendicular. So what's the slope of the tangent line going to be? Negative one over root three. That's right. Just take the reciprocal of square root of three. So that would be one over square root of three and then change the sign to minus. There it is. Just fill that in. So you get a really funky looking formula for your tangent line. There it is. Well, that was kind of a lucky break there, right? Okay. Uh, just the fact that we have a circle here and I was able to use my geometric intuition to realize, oh, this radius line and the tangent line, because this is a circle, these are going to be perpendicular to each other, okay? In general, writing down equations for tangent lines for curves other than circles is going to be a much tougher question, okay? Uh, and it's because the slopes of the tangent lines are going to be hard to figure out, okay, uh, 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 for curves in general. That's where calculus is going to, uh, 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 that's what calculus is going to help us do. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, okay. So, uh, well, we're not quite through reviewing straight lines, and uh, we still have a, a little bit more review to do before we get, uh, 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 before we uh, plunge headlong into calculus. But there's kind of a preview of where we're going, okay, um, uh, it, it, uh, when we get to the calculus part of the course. All right, so we've run out of time today. Remember, your homework is due this evening, right? Your homework is due, uh, uh, that first homework is due this evening. And, uh, and try to do as much as you can, right, on the um, 
the algebra review by Thursday so that uh, we'll know if we have to extend that deadline or not, or you'll be able to ask questions about that, right? Um, on Thursday. All right, uh, we're just like a one minute left. Does anybody have any quick questions uh, that you wanna ask uh, before we, uh, before I turn off the uh, recording? Okay, uh, well, I we still didn't give an, a chance for uh, you guys to do some work on your own here, but um, but we're going to have that next time because notice I've got a little star here beside this question, and uh, that's usually a, 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 a reminder to me that uh, that's a problem that I'm going to have y'all work on. So um, so pretty early on Thursday, uh, we're, I'm going to let y'all do a, 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 a little bit of uh, a, a work on your own, right? Uh, uh, and then uh, so we can compare answers, right? So it's not just me doing all the work and talking, all right? But you'll have to wait until Thursday for that, okay? So um, I will see you guys on uh, Thursday, all right? So um, I'm going to turn off the recording, but if you, and, and you're free to leave. But if you want to stick around and ask me, if you've got anything you need to ask me, then uh, you can do that, all right, uh, right now.